organization which is stands for Energizing Entrepreneurial Ecosystems. A lot of letters in that one. But uh, anyway, it's a program that was assisted through the Nebraska Community Foundation. And we were one of six areas in the state that was picked to be in it, Holt County, uh, also Valley County, Keith County, Sydney, Red Cloud, and McCook were all in this program. And basically, uh, we've been doing some training, some education, and some uh, peer learning opportunities, and kind of finding out what's working in some parts of the state that we could bring to our area of the state and make it work here, and just kind of a good idea bank of, uh, of the whole state kind of working together. So we've talked about things like what makes Holt County or our area a great place to live and do business in, uh, maybe finding out who are some mentors we can learn from that are maybe getting ready to retire that have been successful that might be able to give us some insight. Um, who do we see as our future leaders uh, in our area? Uh, and how can we support entrepreneurs? And that kind of brings us to tonight having our first little business after hours here with the whole county economic development. So we're gonna learn a little bit about Google, which today I did Google cigarette lighters and I uh, ended up getting 15 million matches. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Amanda's gonna tell us, uh, you know, just why we need to use Google and how to use it. Like, uh, the best place to hide a dead body is page two of Google search. Uh, is where the best place is to dead body. She'll tell us how to not be in the dead body part of that. So, um, after we get done, Mike does have a QR code that he wants you to make sure to download and take a survey. If you've got any good topics that maybe we need to cover or somebody that can talk about something that can help our local businesses. Uh, we're looking for great ideas, so we appreciate that. And uh, yeah, for future events and speakers, we'd like to know that. Nicole, did I miss anything on E3 or anything like that? So, okay, with that, we're gonna turn it over because we know there's a national championship basketball game. <laughs> uh, we've got Amanda Olson here from Anchor A Digital Design, and she's gonna tell us about uh, SEO. If you don't know what that is, you're gonna learn about it. Here it is in a minute, Amanda. Uh, thanks for coming out. I would like to kick off by having everyone just quickly introduce yourself, the business that you're here for, and also what drew you to this event. So, I'll start there. I'm Jay Wallinger from Stewart. Um, I'm actually part of the E3 group. I have a business that's Wallinger Financial Services. So, um, here for both, I guess. Nicole Sedlachik, part of the E3 group. Also, I work in economic development for Nebraska Public Power District. And also have Joy Boutique here in O'Neill. Uh, Abby Bethel, I am owner of Creative Advantages, which is a business and marketing consulting company out of O'Neill, and um, wanted to join you guys the last time, um, but my schedule did not align. This one came up, and I'm just here to learn and grow and collaborate with all these great entrepreneurs. Kylie Borg out of Stewart, um, a couple different hats of Southside Mini Mart, um, and then some real estate investment and construction that my husband and I do. Um, and try to get more of an online presence of get the word out there. I'm Lauren Ironic. I'm also part of the E3 group, and I am with the O'Neill Chamber of Commerce. I'm Scott Posey with KBRX, also part of the E3, E3 group. Uh, Kyle Connett, Stewart, uh, part of the E3 group in Strike E, Land of Realty. I'm Andrea Connett from Stewart, and I'm going to try to help Kyle with some of his marketing. <laughs> Schmutter. I'm on the E3 team as well and an ag and commercial lender at Tri County Bank and on our marketing team as well. I'm Lydia Allen. I'm from Ainsworth. I work at Tri County Bank in Stewart and I'm a marketing specialist at Light and Oneal. I'm Stephanie Betcher. I'm the owner of Six Degree County Store in Spencer. So I'm Boyd County, but thanks for letting me come on, guys. Uh, trying to get my online presence built up for um, the store. And so, yeah, eager to learn and see how we can help each other. Case Mashinov, also from Spencer. I own Locals Coffee. It's in the same building as the Steph store is. So we work really closely together, and she dragged me along today. <laughs> Just open to learn. I'm Gina. I'm with the Holt County Extension. 
uh, in O'Neill, and I basically have been thrown into their marketing social media. <laughs> they have a ton of programming, and we're doing a big shift from being a lot of in-house workshops to online and all that, so hoping to learn something. Yeah. All right, okay. I'm Dawn Cole. I do the website for Cole Scampers and Stewart. I'm Mike Cole. We own Cole Scampers and Stewart. We're here because Jay said we needed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for introducing yourselves. I have an assignment for you already. So now that you've heard all of the businesses in this room, if you have done business with any of them, when you go home tonight, give them a Google review. This is huge for your business. It's huge for your SEO. And in my opinion, it is the best free way that you can support each other as small businesses. So absolutely. just. If you can get yourself into the habit of supporting each other by giving each other Google reviews, it's huge. All right, well, I have to stand in the back here. Um, it's not the ideal setup, but um, I think this will be good. Can everyone see the slides okay? Can you turn off the light? Good? Okay. All right, so welcome. We're going to talk about how to rank higher on Google SEO secrets for my mission, I'm here to help business owners stand out and get found online so they can create a steady stream of clients and revenue. I'm very passionate about this, especially for small businesses because it's very achievable when you know what, you, what to do. Um, beyond just getting more local business, this is my kind of longer term vision of helping business owners also get more revenue by sales online. So maybe you're getting sales um, from someone over across the country through your offerings online, digital products, but that's a little bit longer term vision. There's a movement that I heard about recently, I think is very cool. It's called Build Back Main Street. A woman named Cody Sanchez is championing, championing it. <coughs> and it's, we all know that corporate business is here to stay, but this is more about local businesses succeeding, um, supporting each other, and um, bringing back the main street. All right, you're in the right place. You have a business with a local audience, which all of you do. You want to rank higher in Google results. You want a steady flow of traffic and leads through your website. Does everyone here have a website? Raise your hand if you don't. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. I know. Uh, Listen to all of the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people are operating more so on like Facebook page and Google My Business. So you guys, this is perfect for you then because this is centered more around a uh, website. Um, maybe you've been working on your site already and you feel like you're doing all of the things, but it's not showing up higher in Google search results. So you're not sure what you're doing wrong. Or maybe you don't even really know where to start. Um, this is a good step in the right direction for, for both groups. Raise your hand if you are familiar with SEO, um, search engine optimization. Okay. There's some hands and there's some half, <laughs> maybe not so sure hands. All right. So a basic description of SEO is it is adjusting and fine tuning your website and its content to increase the chances that Google will show one or more of its pages in search results when a user makes a Google search. So why is now the time to focus on SEO? SEO drives a thousand plus percent more traffic than organic social media. On top of that, the lifespan of a social post is what, like 24 hours or less most of the time. Uh, how many of you are active on social media already? Awesome, that's good. How long does it take you to create like an average post, would you say? Oh, it depends. Yeah. 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 Sometimes too long. Two yeah. minutes, yeah. 25. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, my estimate is people are probably spending 20 to 30 minutes to create a, like a, a good post, a well-crafted post. Um, once you get in a system, it could be faster, but I, I would guess that's probably average. You guys, are you loving your social media and being on social media? Love your relationship. Love you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes I hear, hear the word uh, soul sucking, hamster wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that might resonate a little bit. 
Uh, 88% of searches for local businesses on a mobile device either call or visit the business within 24 hours. So this is called transactional intent. When someone is searching, they are looking for someone to solve their problem, someone to buy from. 92% of searchers will pick businesses on the first page of local search results. A common question I see is people wondering if you can pay to rank higher. And kind of yes and no, yes you can, but it's called Google Ads. Have any of you guys tried Google Ads? No, okay. Um, the, the, I mean, Google Ads can work, but when you turn those off, you're kind of right back to where you were before. So that's why SEO is a great place to start to get everything working on its own. Um, another interesting thing is Google actually made a change recently where there's no longer the paging, I don't know if you noticed, but you just kind of endlessly scroll. And this, I think, is actually a very positive thing for business owners because um, it's, it's for, it, the scrolling functionality is very common. People are used to that. And I think it also takes a little bit of, of the, maybe, I don't wanna say stigma, I don't know if that's the right word, but for a business being on page two or three, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of lose that. So a very good thing for business owners. All right, so what we're gonna cover, what people believe is their SEO problem, but actually isn't. The number one key to ranking higher on Google and SEO secret sidekick that is essential to making sure your SEO efforts don't fall flat. So on your worksheet there, there's the little diamonds. Um, I In the presentation, there's also the little diamonds. Of course, you can write whatever you want down, but that's, you know, those are supposed to be the key takeaways for you. All right, so who am I? I'm Amanda, I live south of Stewart on a ranch. I'm married, we have three stepkids. I love to travel, I've been to a lot of countries. I consider myself a culinary tourist. I like to, when I go somewhere, find the best restaurant, whether it's a, um, a food truck or a restaurant that's in a tiny house with five tables, that's what I love. Um, love our animals and pets and um, venting TV recorders. All right. Professionally, I have a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Visual Communication and Design from UNK. Um, I've worked on websites for 14 years. I've worked for agencies. I've worked in-house as a designer. I've seen the gamut of small business to corporate clients with you know, marketing budgets that are like multi hundred thousand dollars. So these are some of the clients I've worked at at large agencies, um, a couple agencies I've worked for. Um, a, new, a website, UX, stands for User Experience and SEO Specialist. And I've worked on a lot of websites to turn them into lead and sales generating machines. So the one thing I would say here is that if your website isn't your number one best performing salesperson, it's not working hard enough for you. Um, and that's why I'm so passionate about this work is that it's achievable for local businesses to get results when you know what you need to do. And um, I believe that any business owner can start ranking higher when you, um, you have the right tools and knowledge to do it. Where I got started with SEO, in 2016, I worked on a website for a local nutritionist in Lincoln, <coughs> Emily Estes, you might know her, she's from around here originally. And we made some good improvements to her search rankings. I was just getting started at this point, so I didn't keep track of any data points. I wish I would have, because I, I think we did pretty well, but I don't have any metrics to look back on. And that's really where I started to develop my method. And um, more clients came to me. I helped more with their SEO and continued to refine that process. And then I started to see some pretty cool results for clients. And what this showed me was that um, this method was repeatable, it was working, and it worked for clients in different niches. A couple cool results here. A client, Lisa Hillary, out of Milwaukee, she's a therapist. She said, our website optimizations have doubled the number of inquiries we receive each week. We've reduced the amount we spend on Google Ads by more than half. A photographer in Lincoln, since we launched my new site, I'm getting four to five inquiries a day. Which was incredible for her. 
you might be thinking, this is great, but you're an SEO expert. You've been doing this for years. But this is the best part is that as a local business, you don't need a crazy intense SEO strategy to get results. Um, you don't have to implement every tactic under the sun for a local business, which is great. The method I teach doesn't, okay, this just does that. <laughs> doesn't require a real SEO tactic under the sun. Uh, it's not highly technical, and it focuses only on the most impactful action. So that first main point, what people believe is their SEO problem but actually isn't. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, and I often see people asking what, what website platform is the best for SEO. Have you guys ever wondered this yourselves? Raise your hand. No? Maybe? No? Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, what website platform do you guys use? If you don't mind sharing, just two people. I have two of them um, that I help. One that I help with that's on Squarespace, and the other one that's on Weebly. On what was the second Weebly. One? Oh, okay. All right. I used to use Weebly, but we don't use that a lot. How do I actually, this is a dumb question, but how do I pull up my current website resources are based on? Because I'm not seeing the name up there. I just switched up the website in January, so. Okay. Uh, did you build, build it yourself? Um, no, it's um, built by my point of sale. It's built by Rain. Helps with it. Oh, okay. It's probably a proprietary system that they have, but. Okay. Um, cool thing, if you ever want to see how a website is built, you can go to builtwith.com, put in the URL, and it'll tell you the, the tech stack of that website. Yeah. yeah. All right, any others? Okay, so the truth I want to share here is that your website platform isn't the problem. So in those Facebook groups, there are, or I guess the ones that I'm in, a lot of people are asking, and there's so many people saying, this platform is better because of this, this one's better because of this, and then there's a, a few people that are saying it doesn't matter, and that's including myself. Um, there are different platforms have different tools, which I think is why people might think that they are better for Google or not, but Google has no preference on what platform your website is built on. It's looking at how your website is optimized on that platform. It wants to serve up the most relevant, high quality search results and so when you're checking those boxes, that's what Google is looking for. It's not looking for, for the platform itself. So what I see often is that this can lead to what I call platform hopping, where people are moving their website to different platforms, thinking that that's gonna solve their SEO problem. It does not. It leads to wasted time and ending up where you started because it wasn't the problem in the first place. So, do not change your website platform because you think you need to for your SEO. I've never encountered a website platform where I couldn't do the things I needed to for SEO. There are some platforms that are a little bit more limited, but you can still do the bulk of what you need to do on those platforms. For example, uh, GoDaddy, their website builder, not the hosting, but they have a website builder and um, it's a little bit more limited, but you can still do most of what you need to. Square is a little bit more limited, but again, you can still do what you need to. And Square is still a great platform because um, it's, it's a pretty simple platform if you're, if you're getting into e-commerce. Any questions so far before I keep going? All right. Do any of you have slower seasons throughout the year? You shake your head up there. <coughs> what what season would you say is slower? From out of January, February. I mean, the first part of the year. Our okay. fourth quarter is our biggest season. So okay. All right. Anyone else? Summer. Summer. Summer and holidays are common ones. The great thing about SEO is that it can help kind of smooth out those slow seasons, make things a little bit more consistent throughout the year. Uh, client, she said now it's summer, so therapy tends to slow down, uh, but she's still getting inquiries. 
This one is a very niche client. He sells Chrysler Imperial car parts. <laughs> uh, and apparently his slow time was around the holidays, but it was doing very well. So the number one key to ranking higher on Google. A keyword strategy based on data, not guessing, is your number one key to ranking higher on Google. Is anyone familiar with keyword strategy for SEO? Yeah, just a hand. Okay, awesome. How are you? How are you currently doing your keyword research? What were you saying? <laughs> 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 I'll just say. <laughs> All right. Um, clients often come to me, and they've optimized their website for keywords, but they aren't necessarily the right keywords. This has a huge impact. Um, if you aren't using the keywords that people are, are actually searching for, then you're not gonna show up in results for, for what they're searching for. And most businesses, in my opinion, aren't even doing this, so there's a huge opportunity here. I wanna go through some examples, which I think are pretty interesting. So um, I had a client who's a therapist, and when she came to me, she felt like she had done all of the things, all of the optimizing. One of the keywords that she was using was grief therapy. But what her clients were actually searching for was grief counseling. So it's a very minor difference, but grief counseling for her in her area was getting three times as many searches each month. After we got everything dialed in for her website, then we started to see that upward trend in impressions. This next example, after you do this a while, you kind of start to have some hunches. I came across this website and I thought to myself, I bet there's no one searching for pregnancy massage. I bet they're searching for prenatal massage. Pre uh, pregnancy massage was getting zero searches for that area. Prenatal massage was getting 90 searches a month for that area. So you can see there's a huge difference, but that's what makes the difference is using those keywords that people are actively searching for. The last example I have here, uh, wills, trusts, and probate administration versus estate planning. So wills, trusts, and probate administration was getting zero searches for this client this, in their area. Estate planning gets 10 searches, and then there are a lot of similar related key phrases as well around estate planning. I have no doubt that the first one means a lot more to them internally, but when you're using your industry speak and not what your audience is actively searching, then there's gonna be that disconnect. And so if your keyword strategy isn't dialed in, <coughs> Every other action you take your website is going to fall flat because so much of it re revolves around the keywords that you're using. So you really have to have that in place to make everything else worth it. SEO's a secret sidekick that is essential to making sure your SEO efforts actually convert. So getting people to your website isn't enough and what to do about it. This is what I imagine that a lot of business owners think. If I could just get more people to my website, then I'll get more clients. I actually was on a conversation <coughs> with a copywriter friend of mine and I watched her have this aha moment, which was really interesting. And this is what she said. She said, I'm getting like 300, 400, 500 visitors a month, but I'm not actually seeing any booked calls or sales off of that traffic. When most of my clients come to me, they have a, they have, they think they have an SEO problem, but they actually have two problems. So one, they do have an SEO problem, but they also have a conversion optimization problem. So what is a conversion? A conversion is an action that you want your website visitors to take. So this is gonna look like uh, booking a, an appointment, booking a consultation, calling your business, filling out an inquiry form, that is what a conversion is. So if your website isn't optimized for your website visitors to take an action, 
it doesn't matter how many people visit it because you're not going to take that action anyway. I want to do a quick little exercise here. So um, you can write it down or, or just keep your mind, I guess. Um, what is the number one action you want someone to take after visiting your website? Everyone have theirs picked out? Raise your hand if you have a button on your website for that action. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. All right. So, sorry, to just go yep. back. Um, as far as the conversion goes, is that because people get frustrated or it isn't what they what they first want to see isn't there? Great question, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> that is what I'm going to It's a lack of patience. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. Uh, the next question that I get naturally is, what is the cause for the conversion issue? So uh, these are pretty general, but the first one, the messaging is unclear. Someone gets to your site, they can't figure out what you do, who you're for, if they're in the right place, and people most likely are then just going to, to leave. So there's a phrase, um, if you confuse, you'll lose. Um, it, people aren't going to work to find out what they, what they're, what they came for. They're just gonna leave because it's easier to leave than to try and decipher everything. Second, the branding doesn't connect with the target audience. Uh, this one I don't see as much as I used to, which is a great thing, um, but there often are little tweaks that you can make to the, the color palette, the look and feel, the imagery, to make sure that it connects with your target audience. An example I can give is I have a, a therapy client who <coughs> her target audience is um, overwhelmed moms, and on her website, um, she had some images. I could I understand why she chose them. It's like people blowing bubbles and um, you know light and airy. But um, the images were of, are of men, and that doesn't that's not her target audience. So that's one of those little disconnects. All of those details matter, and so that's something that we're looking at. Three, the the website has formatting issues. So this is things like uh, broken links, which happen uh, more often than you might think. Um, Maybe the navigation is, is cumbersome, it's huge. Um, you don't know how you're getting to certain pages and you don't know how to get back. Uh, the page flow doesn't um, go in a natural manner and take you to the next step. So those are some things that can be issues. And for lack of trust signals. Have you, are you guys familiar with the term social proof? Social proof is things like reviews, testimonials, there are lots of different forms. So if you're featured in a publication, that's social proof. Uh, your overall review rating, that's a form of social proof. So there's a lot of different things. But these things, when used on your website, instill confidence in your buyers or your potential buyers. And so a lot of the times, um, we just need to add those trust signals in. And one of the great things is that a lot of the time, this can be accomplished with simple tweaks. It doesn't take an overhaul. Um, little things can make a huge difference. I have one caveat though, and I don't know that anyone in this group um, falls into this, but your website was built in like the late 90s, and it's not responsive, then that is your priority. If your website isn't doesn't work well on mobile devices, then that's, that's the biggest issue you need to solve. Is that anyone in here? Okay, good. Uh, so this is an example of how a little tweak can make a difference. Uh, this is from my Facebook group. At the time, I was sharing about the importance of having a clear call to action, which is basically a button that tells people you know, what to do related to that conversion. And um, a, a member implemented this, and it made a big difference for her site. And she said, for the first time, I have a book a free consultation button on each page. I have no clue how many people couldn't find the old link 
or maybe it was too subtle, but the new call to action button has completely increased my converts to consultation. So that's a small tweak that made a huge difference. So at this point, we've covered why you need to have a spot on keyword strategy before you do anything else, and why that's really the foundation for it all. Your website platform is not the problem. It's how you optimize your website on any platform that's the key. And that your website also needs to be optimized to convert. So there's the SEO part of it, but then there's the conversion optimization part of it. I'll walk through my uh, three-part rank revolution framework to kind of give you an idea of how this gets put into play. So at the <coughs> bottom, it's probably no surprise that the keyword strategy is the base because that's where everything starts. I call it my North Star keyword strategy because that's the guiding light. Every action you take after that reflects the keywords that you've chosen. So next is your website SEO optimization. So those are some of the um, more, I don't want to say technical, but some of the more tactical uh, tasks where you're updating you know, headlines and um, your page meta descriptions, that kind of thing. You're doing very specific actions that are what Google is looking for when it decides how to rank websites. And then that cherry on top is the website conversion optimization. So uh, this, the bottom two are really getting people to your site, and then once they're there, it's getting them to take that next step. So what each step looks like, finding your North Star keywords. It looks like having a target keyword list for your business and your location based on data, not guessing. The website SEO optimization is your website is connected to Google tools. Google has a couple different tools, um, which are super important. I don't know that um, a lot of business owners, are you guys familiar with Google Search Console? Okay, this is one of the very most important things, so go home and set up a Google Search Console account. And um, it would be too much to get into right now, but that's a super important step for you. Is that anything like the analytics? Nope, it's separate than the okay. analytics. All right, your website content is optimized for target keywords, and your website fulfills what Google is looking for to be considered a credible, trustworthy, and high quality source of information. So what does website conversion optimization look like? Your messaging is clear, it conveys value, and it also tells people why they should choose you over other options that are available to them. Your branding connects with your target audience, so things like your, your imagery, your colors, your fonts, um, all that stuff connects with your audience. There are no structural or formatting issues, so like things like all of the links work, everything goes where it should, um, the menu is easy to understand and it's easy to figure out your site. There are lots of trust signals that instill buyer confidence. So when all of these things are in place, it looks like dominoes where everything falls together and leads to more leads, sales, inquiries, bookings, etc. So that client I mentioned earlier, the photographer, uh, she normally aims to have 50 sessions a year. She had 90 in October, I think, of that year, and was still training people already. Just a recap of the framework. At this point, we can do a couple different things. We can do um, some keyword brainstorming, or we can do some Q&A. What would you guys prefer? I'm gonna start with some questions, I guess. If you have questions, and if we have a little time, you guys want to, we can do the so the Google Search Console, I've never heard of that before. Is that, like, when you said something an account, is that tied to your website? Clear. And it, I guess a very high level, yeah, what yeah. is that? So Google Search Console is a free Google tool. You set it up, and then you have to connect to your website. And this is how Google knows that your website exists. This is how Google knows the pages on your site, the structure on your site. So it's very important. So go ahead, set up your account, get your website connected, and then um, you'll do things like submit your pages, which would be 
made a lot of changes to your website at some point in the future, please submit it so Google knows that your site has been updated. So it's not connected to your Google business page if you already have one of those, it's a separate? It's separate, yep. Okay. yep. Is it Firebase? Somebody, somebody, uh, the lady at uh, Market, I think it was Market Pick, uh, she was at Google, and she mentioned something about that. I think that some people have used misspellings. Yeah. Too. So yeah. that is a strategy. If I, if I were to do that, I would do it on places in the site that weren't um, like public facing. So there's some like kind of um, under the surface level things that you would do for SEO optimization. That's where I would put those if you wanted to target them. Just in I, case ones. <laughs> I've actually seen that be uh, used in, um, I think it was a page description that shows up in results. I would say why you'd want to have that more hidden is because then if you have misspelled words everywhere, it becomes a credibility issue. Yeah. And I think that's more important than probably. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's yeah. A, that's that is a strategy. A word. <laughs> yeah. What are some other key items you can look at? Um, I, I noticed impressions. So what's some other ones that? Yeah, um, so I'm typically looking at impressions is the biggest one. You'll see that in your Google Search Console. Um, I like to look at individual keyword rankings. I don't like to look at overall keyword ranking because a lot of times that is, like in Google Search Console, for example, it's gonna calculate your overall ranking even <coughs> on words that you aren't actively trying to rank for. So even ones that you want to go down, it's gonna average that in. So that's why I don't look at the average ranking in Google Search Console. Um, so I like to look at specific words there. Um, let's see. Those are the biggest ones I think of. And then your, your leads, your, your sales, that's the third biggest one is, is it impacting your, your the bottom line, your inquiries, the numbers that are coming in? Um, this one is a little bit, I don't typically talk about this one, but in Google Analytics, your bounce rate is something that you might look at. So if people are coming to your site and leaving right away, it could be a sign of issues on your site. It could be a sign that your messaging isn't clear. So that's if you have a high bounce rate, um, that can be another thing to look for. Okay. Since you brought up analytics, what's the difference when you have um, a direct and an organic search? What's the what's it trying to tell you in your data there? A direct is when someone goes <laughs> types in your URL, goes straight to your website. Specifically that one. Yeah. Okay. Organic is when they come through via Google. Yeah. By a, a search engine. Okay. So like by a word. Um. Yeah, it would be a search a search query. Like they typed in. That's more of like your, your path of how they got there is, is what that's looking at. I, I actually don't use Google Analytics a lot for SEO purposes because Google Search Search Console shows you the data of the higher sites performing in actual, actual, oh my gosh, actual search. Analytics is more so after they've gotten there. So that would be the difference I would say between the two. say to keep it more manageable for you there is such thing as keyword cannibalization where um, you're using competing keywords everywhere on your site so 
the idea is that each page has a specific set of, like a focus, I guess. So that's where you would have your primary keywords, your secondary keywords. You can, I mean, you're probably naturally going to use them in other pages of your site. Uh, you don't want to go overboard where you're using um, just the keywords that you're using are, are everywhere, like on every page. That would be a problem. So there should be generally a focus on the pages of your site. Would you be able to talk about brand a little bit more? I think. Um, I think that was the second one on one of the pages of importance wise. What would you like to know? I think just, uh, I don't know, Buddy and I had talked a lot about brand consistency and how that follows through to your website. Would you have any? Yeah. Brand consistency is the key reason for brand consistency is so people can develop that um, idea of when I see this look and feel, they know it's your business. So it just kind of is a constant reminder. I would guess that you guys do a pretty good job of this since it sounds like your website is, there's a team that handles it. So I imagine that's, you know, they're working to keep it consistent. Do you notice like challenges or what, what brings up the question? Uh, no, I was just thinking, um, lost my train of thought a little bit, but just the, I just always think that's really important mm -hmm. of when I go to, you know, go to any type of website that that's, you know, if I see that, then I know and automatically trust that a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Like it, I guess I struggle with brand recognition. I, so I own a small gift store. So I struggle with, do people see my logo and think of my store? I would say no, but I don't know, maybe they hear my name, maybe they do, so maybe that part of the brand, but I, but I, I struggle with branding also. You know, do I need to use the same colors all the time? I'm not Target. You know, you see the Target, you know it's their stuff. I mean, what, do you, see, here's 63 story, are you, are you are you seeing my logo in my head? Are you seeing the color, you know? So I struggle with brand because that one is, I like to change things a lot, so. <laughs> She gets to tell us no sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only have a few. We have a couple of primary and a couple of um, only a few for the uh, brand guidelines. But like marketing and things that I see, they'll have a brand guideline with like tons of colors and oh, really? quite a few font. You know, 
or more than it is. Would you recommend Google Alerts? I use Google Alerts. I, I just have O'Neill, Nebraska, and I have KBRX on my Google Alerts. So every day I get an email that says, here's where, here's where those showed up in a post somewhere. Have you ever used those? I do have it signed up, but I've never actually used it. I've never. It's kind of interesting, like the O'Neill, Nebraska, a lot of it's obituaries and people maybe that live in the grew up born in O'Neill, but I mean, every now and then there's a story that. That's, yeah. I have it on my name as well. Yeah. <laughs> so is that for your Google bit? I mean, that's just your Google business. Yeah. But I mean, if you were selling a certain product and you wanted to see how other businesses were marketing it, you could put yeah. send it yeah. candles or something. Or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then the step after is where you would take it into a research tool. So the biggest thing I try to convey is that, I guess here's an example, I feel like this is the best way to explain this. Um, a client of mine, she is a therapist, she made a list of keywords that she thought people were searching. And one of them was like self-esteem. And so, <coughs> but you have to put yourself in the mindset of the people searching, they're not going to be searching self-esteem to find a therapist. They're going to be searching for something like therapy to help with self-esteem, um, that type of thing. So keep, keep in mind what people are, you think are actually, what they're actually searching. And that was the first list of that, really. <laughs> but um, for someone like, or for a business like Tri-County, I think banks are actually a little bit different category. I feel like they're a little more relationship based where they're probably going to the bank first and then searching for services, but maybe they're searching for something like highest money market account rate or something. Um, so that would be potentially something that would lead, they, they might search for different banks depending on what that search result leads them to. And that part, I mean, it's getting less and less to where how you know, everything's driving towards technology. I mean, there's people my age that only go into a bank once a year. Yeah. So there's just how that's evolving there is also important with whatever business line you're in. They do now say in our platforms called first branch, they do now say that the first branch is going to be the research website. <coughs> do you guys know some of your research data? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like 30 keywords on um, platforms that are using Jira are the best, and they go through, they didn't count the number of years, they didn't count the years, they went through all of our accounts and all of our okay. social media pages. Okay. And then the words for those type of, of accounts and stuff. Okay. But I don't know if people Google much things like money market very often, like they're in there, but See, that's what that's people matters. like yeah. savings accounts. And, I mean, they don't really know these things. I mean, a lot of people don't know those type of words. Yeah, that's another one. A little more sophisticated. Yeah, exactly. That's and why investing that in, like, those ones, yeah. They're not always the words that you use for the theme. It's like it's what terms. they Google. Yeah. 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 I was wondering about Cole's campers. What, what's the keywords? What would I search for? <laughs> you call me. <laughs> Aren't we might be kind of basic compared to some of you? <laughs> but yeah, I think how important it is because I would guess that people have looked at those campers online before they come to your store, haven't they? A lot of them, yeah. Probably you guys get people from distance, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where this can really help you expand your kind of radius of where you are doing business capturing those those people that are farther away. So it can make you more competitive. Yeah. 
it to me like there's further away to talk about the specific brand you can't put a type brand on there, isn't it? That would tell us. Let me know.